The next endocrine gland that we're going to focus on is the parathyroid gland. Now, the parathyroid gland consists of four tiny individual structures found on the back side of the thyroid gland. So if we examine the front portion of the windpipe, we basically get the following diagram. So we have the thyroid cartilage, we have the Adam's apple right beneath that, and right beneath that we have our thyroid gland that is shown in orange. Now, if we examine the back side of this windpipe, we basically get the epiglottis, we have the pharynx, and then we have the back side of our trachea as well as the back side of the thyroid gland shown in orange. And on the back side of the thyroid gland, we have these four individual structures that constitute the parathyroid gland. So the parathyroid gland is found on the back side of the thyroid gland. Now, the blood vessel system and the lymph vessel system that basically provide the nutrients and the blood to our thyroid gland also provide the blood and our nutrients to the parathyroid gland. So we see that the thyroid gland is very much connected to the parathyroid gland. Now, the next question is, what are the hormones or hormone that is released by the parathyroid gland? So we basically only have one hormone. The hormone is known as the parathyroid hormone. And this parathyroid hormone is produced in special cells inside the parathyroid gland known as the parathyroid chief cells or the parathyroid principal cells. And these cells basically produce and secrete the parathyroid hormone. Now, the parathyroid hormone is a peptide hormone and what that basically means is it is produced in the rough endoplasmic reticulum of the chief cells and then it is modified in the Golgi apparatus. Now, because it's a peptide hormone, that implies it's water soluble and so it is soluble in our blood. And that means we do not require any type of protein carrier to actually transport the parathyroid hormone in our blood system. Now, when the parathyroid hormone actually reaches its target cell, because it, can, because it is not soluble in lipids, that means it cannot actually pass across the membrane of the target cell. Instead, it binds onto the membrane of the target cell. It binds to special protein receptors and initiates a secondary messenger system that basically creates some type of change inside the cell. Now, the question is, what exactly is the function, what is the purpose of the parathyroid gland or the parathyroid hormone? Well, the function of the parathyroid hormone is basically the opposite of calcitonin. So, previously we discussed a hormone that is produced by the thyroid gland known as calcitonin and calcitonin is responsible for decreasing the concentration of calcium inside our blood. What the parathyroid hormone does is it increases the concentration of our calcium inside our blood. So this type of hormone is responsible for maintaining and regulating the concentration of calcium inside our blood. Now, the release or inhibition of the, para, uh, of the parathyroid hormone is controlled by the concentration of calcium inside of our blood. Now, when the blood calcium level drops, when it's relatively low, the parathyroid gland releases the parathyroid hormone and this basically increases the concentration of calcium inside our blood as a result of three different things. So it basically does three important things. Firstly, it increases the activity rate of osteoclasts and decreases the activity of osteoblasts. So osteoblasts are those cells inside our bone that build the bone. It builds, it builds bone matrix by taking calcium from the blood and using that calcium to build the matrix. On the other hand, osteoclasts are those cells in the bone that resorb the bone. They break down the bone by breaking down the bone matrix and releasing the calcium and the phosphate ions into our blood. 
So what our parathyroid hormone does is it increases the activity of osteoclasts, meaning it increases the rate of resorption of bone. So we break down more bone matrix and we release more calcium into our blood, thereby increasing the concentration of calcium in our blood. Now the parathyroid hormone uh, also actually affects our kidneys. So it increases the amount of calcium that is reabsorbed by our kidneys and this increases the concentration of calcium in our blood and decreases the amount of calcium found in our urine. Now it also affects our intestines. So what our parathyroid hormone does is it activates vitamin D, it produces the active form of vitamin D in the kidneys and then this vitamin D basically helps to absorb more calcium in our intestines. So notice these three things that we just mentioned are the opposite of what our calcitonin does in our in, uh, released by the thyroid gland. So notice that the parathyroid hormone reverses the effects of calcitonin. So whereas calcitonin actually decreases the concentration of calcium in our blood, the parathyroid hormone increases the concentration of calcium in our blood. Now the remaining question is how exactly do we control how much of our parathyroid hormone is released into our blood? Well there's actually a negative feedback mechanism that is in place to control the amount of parathyroid hormone inside our blood. So let's suppose Let's begin by supposing that inside our blood plasma we have a low concentration of calcium. In such a case, this will basically trigger the parathyroid gland to release the <coughs> to release the parathyroid hormone. So we have a positive feedback loop here, a positive feedback loop here, and so when we increase the amount of parathyroid hormone, PTH, in our blood, that basically does three things. It increases bone resorption, so it increases the rate of osteoclasts and decreases the rate of osteoblasts. It increases the absorption of our kidneys as well as increases the absorption of calcium in our intestines and together this basically increases the amount of calcium that is found inside our blood. Now over time as the concentration of calcium in our blood increases this will create a negative feedback loop and it will cause our parathyroid gland to basically decrease in its release of PTH and so over time this, was, this will stabilize and maintain the concentration of calcium in our blood serum, in our blood plasma. So the amount of PTH, the parathyroid hormone that actually circulates in our serum is controlled via a negative feedback loop as we just discussed. So basically together the calcitonin hormone released by the thyroid gland and the parathyroid hormone released by the parathyroid gland, these two hormones are responsible for regulating and maintaining the amount of calcium found inside our blood plasma.